What up? I'm Trevor Pelka. This is the Braves Time Blog. So the trade deadline came and went, and the Braves did not trade for Sonny Gray. My brief opinion on that is that they probably should have because the package that the Yankees gave up in order to get him, I think that the Braves easily could have beaten, uh, and I think it would have been pretty wise to do that. They still need a number one starter, and that's okay. And the reason for that is that there is so much pitching that's going to be available this offseason. They need a number one starter. They should go out and get one. It's possible that they don't again, but they likely will. And here's the reason. There's so much pitching, and I'm going to go through all of the number one starters that they could look to add this offseason. For starters, Justin Verlander. I don't want the Braves going after Justin Verlander. That contract, how old he is, it's not appealing to me, but the point is that he's there. They can leverage that. They can use him as an option if they need to, uh, or drive up the price on him for someone else. Point is that Justin Verlander is on the market as an option. Second of all, Garrett Cole. Uh, I don't know that Pittsburgh will be looking to trade Garrett Cole. It wouldn't shock me if they wanted to keep him and go for it another year. Uh, they have two more years of control of him. It really will depend on how they feel about Tyler Glass now and Jamison Tyon. It won't come cheap, but we definitely have the option to go in on Garrett Cole. Uh, again, very good starter, uh, very controllable. Uh, so it would definitely be worth it for the Braves to try and add Garrett Cole. And with that, the Pirates are in desperate need of young starting pitching, which we have a abundance of. Marcus Stroman, uh, again, wouldn't be cheap, uh, but it's time that the Blue Jays start discussing the idea of it to start uh, boosting up their farm system because it's not very good and their period of contention looks like it's coming to an end. They're in a really good division. So yeah, they should start looking to trade uh, Marcus Stroman. They might not do it this offseason, but again, you can get him. You definitely can overwhelm them with an offer. Uh, and I think that Stroman is the best of the, the trading options that we've mentioned. And also Garrett Richards. Now, Garrett Richards only has one more year of control. He'll be a free agent after next year. Uh, so it's really up to the Angels. The Angels want to play that out or if they want to re-sign him after that and sign up for another half decade of mediocrity. That's all up to them. They can do that if they want to. If they want to improve their revolting farm system, they can also do that. And the Braves would be a great trade partner for that because, again, literally anything would make the Angels farm system better. As far as Braves, you can have him for a season. You can look and see if you want to re-sign him. You can let him walk. You can trade him mid-season. The sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want and he's the cheapest option of any of the guys that I've mentioned thus far in terms of trading. Jason Vargas. Now he's 34 years old but he is a frontline starter right now. Uh, if the market stays calm on him then he's a great option to have. Now there's always the possibility that a team like the Yankees could fall in love with him and do something stupid, give him a longer term contract than they should, in which case that's absolutely on them. Uh, but if the market does stay calm on him, I see Jason Vargas at 34 years old as a great option for a three-year contract with his team option after the second year. I'd take that all day. And there's Johnny Cueto. Now, in my opinion, Johnny Cueto is the best pitcher that will be available this offseason, and he's the one that I've really been holding out that the Braves do go after. Now, again, that was Bartolo Colon last year, but we're not going to talk about that. He's 31 years old, and he's going to opt out of his contract. Now, again, 31 years old is just not that old. We're acting like it's older than it is. My suggestion would be a five-year contract, $25 million annually, with an opt-out after the third year. He could hit free agency again at 34, and he could make a lot more than the $50 million that we were going to offer him in the last two years of the contract. I would take that all day. It's a little risky, but it would only cost you money. And we saved up all this money, all this time. We're not held down by big contracts. What did we do that for if not for this? There's Jake Arrieta. Jake Arrieta will be a free agent, and I don't love him. He's not a guy that I'm sitting around holding out that the Braves will go after because I don't think that the Cubs will let him go. The Cubs are in the middle of a run of contention that they don't want to let slip away through their fingers or anything. So I think that they will pay Jake Arrieta. Uh, but I wouldn't if I were the Cubs. He's a 31-year-old that relies a little too heavily on his fastball for his fastball to age. I think it'll cost comparable money to Cueto uh, if the Cubs are willing to do that. Now, if the market treats Jake Arrieta the way that I would treat Jake Arrieta, which there is more of a trend towards that in recent years, then you could get him on sort of a pseudo-prove-it deal. Uh, a two or three year deal for less you know, annual money or possibly more annual money, but it's shorter years for him to prove that he's more worthy of the long-term contract. I would take that. That would be a good deal for you. You Darvish. I like you Darvish. I don't love you Darvish. Uh, the thing about him, he's 30 years old, which is younger than you would think he is, and he's going to get big money, but you can't afford that. Uh, I would have no issue with going after a, a four-year, $25 million annual contract for you, Darvish. The issue is that I can see a team like the Nationals, the Astros, the Cubs uh, getting too big for their britches and thinking that that's you know, something that they should do with their run of contention. If they do that, then absolutely that is theirs to do. Four years, $100 million is about all that I would be willing to offer you, Darvish. If he exceeds that, good for him. That's his business. 
And I'll mention Alex Cobb. I like Alex Cobb. I don't think he gets near enough credit. Now, I don't think that you guys are going to recognize this for what it is because you're all going to say he's not a number one starter. You are right. He's not a number one starter. He's a two starter. I think he's a pretty definitional number two starter like Julio Tehran. So essentially, you're putting two Julio Tehrans in there. They, your rotation would be Alex Cobb, Julio Tehran, Mike fulton Sean Newcomb, and either R.A. Dickey or whatever fifth starter you want to put in there from your farm system. Make what you will of that. It's a pretty good rotation if you sure up the bullpen, if you have that same lineup that you have right now with improvements from Ozzy and Dansby and Acuna. That's a wild card contender at the very least. So it's absolutely worth exploring if you can get Alex Cobb at the right price. Now, what I'm not saying to you is that any of these options are perfect options. I don't see a perfect option this offseason. That's kind of why I say Sonny Gray might have been the time to go in on him. But what I'm saying is that you have a lot of options. I just named nine starting pitchers that are available this offseason for you to go and make a commitment on if you want to. Now, if you don't, that is okay, but you need to make sure that you improve the team and by that, improve the rotation while you're doing it. Uh, this is really the time where you get to see that extra level of, of nuts from Copy. This is where good GMs are sort of determined. You know, anyone can sell, and Copy has proven that he's great at selling. We haven't seen him really buying all that much. We've seen him buying low on a, guy, a lot of guys, but we've never seen him in a situation where you have to take an okay team and make them good, or you have to make a good team and make them great. Well, that's what the great GMs are doing. Uh, so this is where we're going to get to see that happen for John Capalella. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. What I really hope that they do is that they stay on the phone with all these guys. They stay on the phone with the agents and with the GMs uh, and leverage the fact that there is an abundance of starting pitching. Get the best deal for you and then go out and have a great season after that. I really believe that he can do that, uh, but it's always scary. You never know exactly what will happen once the offseason actually gets going, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and again, I'm Trevor Pelka. This is the Braves Time Vlog. It's a YouTube channel where I talk about the Braves and I talk about baseball in general. So I really hope you enjoy watching and go Braves.